Hello, welcome to sub module 3.2. This is the last sub module of the course and the second in module 3 uh, on other topics. In this sub module, we're going to look at two set of topics. The first one is going to do with the op amp device. We're going to look at the model of the op amp device from the terminal perspectives so you can then employ that model to analyze any type of circuit that involves op amps and therefore by doing so you'll be able to understand how we can use op amps in a number of practical applications the other set of topics have to do with two port networks there are four types of two port network parameters the admittance, the impedance, the hybrid parameters, and the transmission parameters. However, we're only going to look at the admittance and impedance, although all four set of parameters are covered in your book. By understanding different parameters, such as admittance and impedance, you'll be able to convert between them. And if we have a complex connection between multiple sets of two port networks, we'll talk about how to cascade the parameters to be able to calculate the total parameters from the input port to the output port. So let's start by looking at the op-amp. The op-amp these days are integrated circuits. We can have chips like this that have several op-amps in it. Or we can have smaller chips that have a single op amp. Op amp are devices that are constructed in reality by utilizing multiple transistors. They are complex circuits. Here we can see a very old rendition of an op amp made of discrete transistors, capacitors, and resistors set up in a module. Historically, an intermediate way of doing op amps was with hybrid circuits where we could see the transistors as integrated circuits and then deployed in a ceramic substrate and then packaged in a case. If we look at the data sheet of a chip these days that for example would have four op amps we can see the symbol of the op amp here and the three main connections and we'll talk about this in detail in subsequent slides we'll have a positive input we'll have a negative input and we'll have an output and they can be connected in a chip like so also we need to provide power to the chip so we're going to have a positive voltage connection, usually it's called VCC, and we're going to have a negative power connection, usually denoted as VEE. As I mentioned, the op-amp has three primary terminals. Two input terminals, the positive input and the negative input and it's going to have an output terminal. It also is going to have the power terminals, the positive power, and the negative power, which are reference to ground. This is usually a negative voltage, and VCC is a positive voltage. And this is what is called bipolar op-amps, meaning that they take negative and positive voltage as supplies, reference to ground, and we can also have monopolar op-amps. And they are also called single-ended op-amps, in which we provide at VE a ground and we provide some positive voltage at VCC, keeping the same three inputs, the positive input, the negative input, and the output. In the case of the bipolar op-amp, 
even though we do not supply ground to the op-amp circuit, all voltages are referenced to ground, which has to exist in the overall circuit that employs the op-amp. Now let's look at the model of the op-amp, and then we have the two inputs, the positive input and the negative input. All inputs, all voltages, as I mentioned, are referenced to ground. We also have an input impedance, denoted here as a RI, and we have the output voltage going through an output impedance. And the output voltage is modeled as a voltage dependent voltage supply in which that output voltage is going to be the difference between the positive and the negative input voltages multiply by a gain and usually this gain is very high more than a hundred thousand so v in this expression would be a to zero times the difference of the positive voltage minus the negative voltage and this expression is what we call Vn. So we can see that additionally the output voltage even though let's say we're talking about a bipolar op-amp, even though we don't supply ground to the op-amp itself, the output voltage is referenced to ground, as it appears in the overall circuit that employs the device. So here we have the input side. Let's say that we are applying a voltage through some output impedance of the voltage source into the inputs across the input impedance of the op-amp. That is going to be Vn. On the output side, we already said that the output voltage is modeled by a voltage-dependent voltage source given by V in times a very high gain through the output impedance into a output load. And that would be the V out that we measure. What we'd like to know is what is the input output relationship for the op amp? What is the gain or V out divided by Vs? So if we derive that expression, we have that in the input side, the difference between V in plus and V in minus is going to be equal to Ri divided by the sum of Ri plus the source resistance of Vs times Vs. Now in here, we have taken Vs to the other side of the equation or divided both sides of the overall equation by Vs to get the gain or the output-input relationship of the op-amp V out divided by Vs. So we have this expression here that is part of V in. So we're going to multiply that times the gain, A0. And that's going to be the voltage that we're going to see across these two terminals. So we have to figure out what V out is. And to do that, we construct another voltage divider. We say that V out is this voltage times RL divided by the sum of the output impedance of the op-amp plus RL. And that is this expression that we have here. Now, normally, the input impedance is very, very high. 
and the output impedance is very, very low. The output impedance would be much smaller than the source impedance of the input, which will make this expression in the limit as the input impedance approaches infinity, this expression is going to be 1. On the output side, normally the output impedance is much, much lower than the load impedance. Therefore, this expression as the output impedance approaches 0 is also going to approach 1. So these two terms in the brackets normally are for all intents and purposes one so that leaves us with the expression that v out divided by vs the output divided by the input is equal to the gain and we call this very high gain the open loop gain of the open and it's not very useful because it's such a high gain that what we're going to see is that for only a few small fractions of voltage difference between the inputs, in reality, the op amp is going to saturate this output to the power rails. So we have to tame that high gain to make it useful. And we do that via feedback and various uh, circuits that are explained in your book to do useful things with the op amp. So here we have that the op amp in the useful region, the linear region, the input ranges by only a few microvolts. And for this set of op amps, the linear region, the region of the input in which the op amp behaves linearly and has most useful applications, it ranges in the millivolts. The two concepts that allow us to model the op-amp from the terminal devices coexisting with external devices such as resistors, capacitors, inductors, and such in useful circuits with feedback in the linear region are the following. First, we already said that the input impedance is very high. Therefore, we can model the input currents into the input terminals as zero. We can say that they're both zero. The other very important concept is that there exists a virtual short, a virtual short between the input terminals. And that gives us an expression that says that the voltage at V plus is going to be equal to the voltage at V minus. And we need that assumption for the op-amp to operate in the linear region. Otherwise, if these two voltages are not very close, ideally the same, then the op amp is out of the linear region and is going to saturate to one of the power voltage rails and is not going to be very useful from a linear application perspective. So utilizing these two concepts and replacing the op amp by the model that we discuss, and usually all we have to do is replace it by a model that has just this voltage source, so we can assume that RO is zero, and then just apply the V plus and the V minus and remove this resistor by assuming that it is very high or infinite. So that simplifies the model further when we analyze circuits with op amps. And by replacing the op amp with that very simple model and utilizing the concepts here that the currents into the inputs are zero and more importantly the fact that there is a virtual short between the two inputs such that v plus is equal to v minus 
then it becomes an exercise of circuit analysis with devices that we are familiar with, such as capacitors, resistors, and inductors, and sources to derive the output to input relationship or the gain of the op amp for any given circuit. It is also useful to remind you that once you set this resistor to zero, then this voltage, instead of contemplating or taking into account the very high gain, simply becomes the output voltage. With those concepts and the replacing of the op amp device with the simplified model, we can just use regular circuit analysis techniques to derive that output to input relationship. Now, next, we're going to look at the admittance and impedance parameters of two port networks. We have seen one type of linear network throughout the course. For example, when we were calculating Thevenin's and Norton equivalents, we have seen a linear network with one port of interest. Now we're going to consider a linear network where we are interested in an input port, which we're going to call port 1, and an output port, which we're going to call port 2. So this is port 1, and this would be port 2. This is very useful to model complex devices such as transistors. So two port network theory along with Dependent sources comes in very handy when analyzing complex devices such as transistors. So we see that in port 1, we have an input current defined into the port and a voltage across the port. And on port 2, we have an output current defined as a current into the port and a voltage across the port. And these uh, definitions are important because the equation that describe the parameters rely on these standards. So first, we're going to look at the admittance parameters, the Y parameters, and they're given in the context of this system of linear equations in which the input current is going to be the admittance, as seen from port 1, times the input voltage plus the admittance from port 1 to port 2 times V2. And the output current is going to be the admittance as seen from port 2 to port 1 times V1, the voltage at port 1, plus the admittance at port 2 times the output voltage. And again, this can be formulated as a system of linear equations. Now this, now these two port parameters rely on certain conditions, such as the voltage at port 2 being 0, or the voltage at port 1 being 0. When we force a voltage to be 0, what that means is that we are shorting that port. To ensure that that voltage is 0, we have to short the port. 
So the admittance at port 1 is going to be the input current divided by the input voltage with the output port shorted. The admittance from port 1 to port 2 is going to be the input current divided by the output voltage with the with port 1 shorted. The admittance from port 2 back to port 1 is going to be the output current divided by the input voltage with the output port shorted. And the admittance as seen from port 2 is going to be the output current divided by the output voltage with port 1 shorted. Next, we're going to look at the impedance parameters, which are the Z parameters, which are formulated in the context of this system of linear equations. And we say that the input voltage is going to be equal to the impedance at port 1 times the input current plus the impedance from port 1 to port 2 times the output current. And the output voltage is going to be equal to the impedance from port 2 back to port 1 times the input current plus the impedance at port 2 times the output current. Again, this is the system of equations in matrix format. And these are the formulation of the impedance parameters. When we set the condition that a current has to be equal to zero to ensure that, what we're saying is that we are leaving the port open to ensure that the current is zero at that port. So the impedance at port one is the input voltage divided by the input current where port two is open. The impedance from port 1 to port 2 is equal to the input voltage divided by the output current, leaving port 1 open. The impedance from port 2 back to port 1 is equal to the output voltage divided by the input current, leaving open the output port. And the impedance at the output port is equal to the output voltage divided by the output current leaving the input port open. If you have multiple complex networks that are formed by cascading several two-port networks together, you simply can find the parameters of each individual two-port network, then multiply the parameters as two by two matrices from the input of the overall network to the output of the overall network. And this concludes module 3.2.